Neolithic Britain is perhaps one of the most historically profound collection of ruins to be found anywhere on Earth. Mysterious ancient ancestors who displayed such astonishing abilities of stone building, we still have no logical explanation as to their methods, using unimaginably large megalithic rocks. Often aligned with such perfection, we still struggle to understand where this knowledge came from. Barrows, mounds, earthworks, and other structures, built with such intent, we are only just beginning to unravel their true purpose. We have previously covered a number of these astonishing structures, mostly focused upon the gigantic megalithic blocks within their construction. Often concealed and protected under many tons of earth, that although, according to academia, were apparently constructed by primitive, flint-wielding ancestors, display such precise alignments focused upon the winter solstice that the mystery surrounding their true origin is waiting to be unraveled. However, the most astonishing of all are undoubtedly found upon mainland England. A place which possesses four Neolithic structures, with such an astonishing characteristic, it simply defies modern understanding. The first two structures within this astonishing ancient message being the West and East Kennet Long Barrows. Enormous earthworks measuring at 350 feet long, 75 feet in width, and over 25 meters above ground level with entrances guarded by standing stones over 12 feet in height, each of which many tons in weight. These stones somehow quarried and transported to the site, and precisely placed in their positions far back within antiquity. And although there are a number of other Neolithic structures within the area, these four specific structures have been revealed thanks solely to modern satellite technology to contain an ancient geospatial awareness that is simply astounding. It seems, instead of a Neolithic focus on solstice alignments, these four structures were instead devoted to the far more complex lunar orbit, showing a knowledge of the orbit of the Moon far too accurate to be logically explained. The arc distance between the center points of the long barrows discovered to represent the value of days per lunar orbit, known as an astronomical constant. Both arcs present astronomical constants, days per lunar orbit, and days per lunar anomalistic period. These ancient people somehow knew about these complex orbits, so intrinsically, the geospatial alignment between the four monuments have been mathematically calculated to be so precise they are exact down to the third decimal. Questions obviously arise from such an awareness of such complex knowledge. For example, if these ancient people had such an intimate knowledge of astronomical precisions, why were they only capable of constructing such primitive structures which represent such accuracies? Secondly, if they were only capable of building such structures, who gave them this knowledge? Or indeed, where did it come from? Were they, as we have often postulated, a surviving remnant of a far more advanced civilization that experienced cataclysm upon our planet, retaining such knowledge at that time, yet had lost their technology, slowly leading to a loss of this information over several generations of primitive life? Regardless of our postulations, the complexity within these alignments is undeniable, astonishing, and undoubtedly evidence of the past existence of superior ancient knowledge, and as such, incredibly compelling. There are countless Neolithic sites found all over the world which defy explanation. Not only are these ancient structures built with unimaginably huge megalithic blocks, but the precision that went into their construction defy modern academic understanding. However, we have postulated and hypothesized that these academically claimed primitive structures are only primitive in appearance. 
for the knowledge that went into their construction, knowledge we have often exposed and shared here on our channel, now lost to history, along with their mysterious constructors, is of an extremely advanced nature. As such, we believe that these men here's mounds, hinges, and in particular dolmens, were constructed by a remnant of a civilization that were quite possibly responsible for the most famous, most baffling structures on Earth, which are also usually found in similar locations, these being the original foundations of Baalbek, the Great Pyramids, among many others. We believe that the knowledge which clearly went into the building of these structures could have only been attained by a technologically advanced culture, with these surviving groups utilizing what remained of this knowledge, absent the destroyed technologies, to create these awe-inspiring sites. We have previously noted on our channel the ancient Neolithic mound known as Mays How, an ancient mound which can be found upon the Ornkey Islands, Scotland. Our initial reason for covering this site was the enormous megalithic stones that went into the construction of its entranceway, and quite possibly the exoskeleton buried beneath the many tons of earth that now form and protects the still existing mound itself. However, there exists another Neolithic chamber, found in Ireland, that not only shares the same remarkably huge, unexplainable stones making up its construction but also a precision of solar alignment that boggles the modern mind. Known as New Grains Passage, like Mays Howe, it is a circular mound with a structure hidden beneath many tons of earth. However, it also shares a dedication to the precession of the sun with an alignment with the winter solstice that could have only been accomplished by a group with tremendous capabilities and indeed advanced astronomical knowledge. Although most of the structure is buried under the mound, the stones in which are visible, like Mays Howe, are easily identifiable and many tons in weight, some more than likely upwards of 20 to 30 tons. Yet these enormous stones have been placed with such care, elegance, and precision that on the winter solstice, its alignment allows the entire complex to be lit up by the winter sun. This event is well known, and many people flock to the site every solstice to witness this wonder. Yet academia still stubbornly deny that these structures were undoubtedly created by a group with tremendous intellect, possibly leftover knowledge, now forgotten and lost, of the precise travel of the sun's passage through the sky. We mightn't realize that as they walk in, the floor rises, such that the actual floor here is level with the roof box. And that means that when the sun rose 3200 BC, the light would have actually reached across the floor and way back into the chamber there. Nowadays, we have to wait about 11 minutes before the sun actually enters the chamber. The result of that is that it, it, the sun actually, the sunlight ends up more or less in the middle of this main chamber here. So the builders of Newgrange actually built it so it was perfect for sunrise. Were these alignments created merely with a motive for heating these layers? Or were they created with a more profound reason? Were these ancient people worshippers of the sun? And in addition, were they attempting to leave future intuitive generations, like us, clues as to their intelligence and capabilities, giving us an opportunity to ponder, hypothesis, and possibly unravel as to how they knew such knowledge, where this knowledge came from, or indeed where it and they went? Many people are now convinced, after many years of study, that the most famous Neolithic site within the UK, Stonehenge, was once a solar calendar, an extremely complex one. And due to the precision that is clearly encapsulated within these two mounds, we tend to agree. These people were obviously devout sun worshippers, but were also, due to the immense size of the stones used in their construction, 
attempting to leave a visible legacy for vigilant future generations to ponder over and possibly discover information they were trying to tell us we are yet to realize. It is, undoubtedly, highly compelling.